Hey guys, welcome to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube. And normally we'd be talking about uh, Python or machine learning or deep learning, but uh, let me take one tutorial to talk about getting your system ready for TensorFlow GPU. And quite a few of you, my viewers, asked me for this video, but I didn't have an opportunity or need to, uh, to actually show you how to do it. In fact, I was uh, waiting to upgrade my workstation, which I just did. So this gives a great opportunity. And I should tell you, I just finished getting the system ready. And I didn't do a video while I'm getting it ready. In fact, that would have been a better way, but uh, I was anticipating some issues. But luckily, this went in a very smooth way. I should say uh, this process should work uh, for any relatively new GPUs. My older workstation had a very old GPU and it required me to use a certain driver for NVIDIA. It required me, it, which forced me to actually work with like TensorFlow 1.4. Uh, but, but if you have a relatively newer uh, GPUs, again, you can check that on TensorFlow's website, then hopefully the process I'm gonna talk about uh, will help you, okay? So let's jump in. I captured these into like nine steps so we can focus on each step at a time. So let me go ahead and show you these nine steps on a notepad. I'm not even trying to be fancy here in putting it into PowerPoint or something. So let's jump in. Okay, so here is uh, the brand new workstation. Obviously not many icons yet. It's new, it'll be filled pretty soon. So here are uh, some of the steps. The first step is install Visual Studio Community Edition. Okay, this is a must. So just go to uh, Google search and type Visual Studio Community Edition and download the latest version. I believe mine was uh, 19, Visual Studio 2019. Okay, and I leave the link and I leave all of this description as part of the description, well, all of the, these notes as part of the description down below. Go ahead and copy uh, and try to follow these. And once you install Visual Studio, again, nothing tricky here. It's very straightforward. Then you have to install your IDE if you haven't already done so. If you have PyCharm or Spider or whatever IDE you are working with, uh, uh, fine. If not, go ahead and install it. This would be the time. So I installed Spider 4.1.5 that actually come via, via uh, Anaconda. So I just go to anaconda.com and then look at your uh, individual edition of Anaconda. Go ahead and download it and install it. Comes with uh, Python, it comes with uh, managing environment like uh, Conda packages, it comes with uh, Spider IDE. So I tend to use the Spider IDE, so this is fine. So what do we have? Visual Studio Community Edition, we have an IDE that we want to work with. And the goal is to install uh, TensorFlow GPU on this IDE. But there are certain things you need to take care of. That's obviously why you're watching this video. So, uh, but before uh, getting into drivers and media and all that one other thing i really recommend is separating an environment for your ide when i downloaded this it came with python 3.8 but uh but uh, uh, sorry let me go back and uh, so it came with python 3.8 but i installed python 3.7 and how did i do that i went to anaconda navigator and i created a new environment okay why python 3.7 well I work with a lot of libraries and 3.8 is very new. And uh, yesterday I tried to do something and then it's like, okay, something happened. And uh, it, it took me half an hour to figure out, oh, 3.8, okay, it's not ready for all the libraries I'm working with. So let's go back to 3.7 because I know it's, it's very stable, okay, for all of these libraries. That's exactly why I went back to 3.7. Now, when you're creating a uh, environment here in, uh, in uh, you know, via using Anaconda Navigator, uh, it shows you a drop down and you can select whether you want 3.7 or 2.7 or 3.4 if that doesn't show up. Because when you install this, uh, this probably is a bug with Anaconda. But if that doesn't show up, I think I included that here. You can just do this from the command line, okay? You can just go to your uh, Anaconda right there and then Anaconda prompt, open the Anaconda prompt and then type conda create uh, minus N, meaning you're creating a new environment. Give it a name. It, I gave Py37. I think I should have given Py37 GPU. So it tells you this is using Python 3.7 GPU and then uh, Py, uh, Python 3.7 Anaconda. That creates your new environment. Once the new environment is created, obviously you can just go back and then uh, select that environment. And then if uh, Spider is not already installed, go ahead and install it. If it's already installed, you can launch it, okay? 
I hope so far so good. So what did we do? Install Visual Studio, install the IDE if it's not there, and then separate an environment for our GPU so we can focus on that environment uh, and not, you know, not screw up something else that you already have. Okay, so once you're done with that, now follow, uh, uh, to, to follow these steps from now on, you can just go to tensorflow.org slash install slash GPU. Okay, do I have that page right there? So this page, and this can be very useful, very resourceful, but it's got a lot of information, right? I mean, it's got a lot of information, so let's focus on some. That's exactly why I've written them down. So first of all, even before your pip install TensorFlow, you have to come down and make sure your NVIDIA GPU card with CUDA architectures and higher than 8.0. Like, how do you know what CUDA architecture do you have? First of all, go ahead and install the latest NVIDIA driver. In fact, I didn't even uh, realize that when I installed brand new Windows, NVIDIA drivers were not there. So I went to NVIDIA uh, web page and I Google searched for drivers and then I downloaded the driver, installed it. And once I installed the driver, I see the NVIDIA uh, control panel right there, click on it. And then uh, this is how it looks like on my system. Like I said, I have two Quadro P5000s and the version of driver is 461.72 right there. Okay, so this is it. And uh, what uh, compute capabilities do I have? So if I actually go to uh, this GPU cards, open it, okay, CUDA enabled GPU cards, I can search for a specific uh, GPU card right here and make sure the compute capability, in my case, P5000, the compute capability is 6.1. So I know this is ready. My previous older workstation had compute capability of some, some weird, uh, I think even below uh, two or something, and I had to go through some trouble, but uh, hopefully you have a newer one. Compute capability 6.1. What does that mean? Now let's come back here, and you see compute capability 6.1, it, it's fine. We are all good. Okay, GPU card with CUDA architecture. So now we can proceed. What's the next step? So far, we upgraded the driver, right? So I said, verify your GPU is actually supported for deep learning, which we just did. Yes, of course it is, because I have compute capability 6.1. Next, figure out your GPU model. I have P5000, like I already mentioned, and update the driver. I just mentioned about it. We did that, and my version of driver is 461.72. Again, it's about 400, I'm fine. Now, download and install CUDA Toolkit. Again, let's go back to this TensorFlow page right there. And I'm following these steps, okay? So NVIDIA GPU drivers uh, for CUDA 11 requires 450.x or higher, okay? I checked that box. I think I mentioned that, 461. So we are good right there. Again, you have to check this for your own, uh, your own uh, uh, you know, uh, GPU card, but uh, if it's relatively new, this works, like I mentioned. Okay, the next step, once your driver is up to date, CUDA Toolkit, okay? And uh, the latest one is, again, since they mentioned 11, I think if you go to CUDA Toolkit, they have 11.2. I I was trying to be a bit careful. I don't I don't I don't install the latest one. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> I don't want to take that chance. So I just went back to 11.0, like they mentioned in the documentation, and I installed this CUDA Toolkit 11.0. That's exactly what I installed right there. Okay, and here is the link. Once you're done with that, what's the next step? The next step is, uh, by the way, if you install CUDA Toolkit, it also installs this Coop T, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to install that separately. Next comes CUDNN SDK 8.0.4, right? I meant CUDNN SDK 8.0.4, so I went to CUDNN page and uh, right here, and you have to register as uh, NVIDIA developer. If you have Google account, you're fine. You know, Google email, go ahead and sign up. It's free and then uh, go ahead and download. I mean, right now the latest one is 8.1, but again, I really want to stick with what these guys have on their web page, so I just did 8.0.4. So that's what I downloaded. Now, this is, CUDNN is not something that you install. It's actually a, uh, a zip file, zip folder, that you extract, and where do you extract that? You extract it into C program files, uh, this location. So if you go, uh, where is this? Right there. So C program files, NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit, CUDA and version. In my case, my CUDA is 11.0. So I just go into 11.0 and extract all the contents from your CUDNN folder, the zip folder in here. This is it. You're all set. 
in uh, in terms of having cool DNN and everything. The next step is installing TensorFlow. This is obviously uh, straightforward. You open your spider uh, under the environment that you just created and then pip install TensorFlow. You don't have to do pip install TensorFlow-GPU. That used to be in older versions of TensorFlow. Now in, uh, let's say, March, April timeframe of 2021, then uh, uh, just do pip install TensorFlow. Okay, then uh, it, ins it, it uh, if you if it recognizes GPU, it's going to use GPU. Okay, now once you're done with uh, TensorFlow, the next step is just verifying the installation. You're all set actually. So now let's go ahead and I'll, I'll leave this uh, part of the code and all you need to do is uh, go ahead and run this. It's, it's basically if the CUDA, if GPU is available, it's going to say, okay, this is available, this GPU. If not, yeah, let me show you what, what you'll see. One of my last lines here is uh, device uh, GPU zero with uh, you know 14.3 gigs and physical GPU name P5000. Same thing with uh, device one. So it, it found two of these, device zero and device one. So it found both of my uh, GPUs. I'm all set. Now I can go ahead and start using the uh, using the code. In fact, if you think that, wow, you have two GPUs, uh, great. Uh, it's not that great on Windows. This is uh, this is the part I hate about uh, uh, about this <laughs> this uh, TensorFlow GPU on Windows. On Windows, you'll not be able to efficiently use both GPUs for training. I have to give you this warning. So if you are if you are planning on purchasing GPUs for your uh, Windows system, put extra money in getting a, a bigger GPU, a single bigger GPU rather than trying to get uh, two GPUs. Why do I have two GPUs? Uh, because this system that I purchased is not brand new. It's it's uh, someone used it. Uh, apparently for gaming or something, and then they are about to dispose it off for for cheap, I guess, and uh, I got it, okay? So that's why it's got two GPUs, of course. Uh, the way I use it is I record these videos while the training is happening on a different GPU. So it, it really helped me. Now, why can't you use two GPUs for training on Windows? Well, if you try to do that, it throws an error saying that NCCL something something. Uh, you cannot basically install NCCL that's required for multi-GPU. On Windows systems, you have to either use hierarchical copy method. Okay, how? I mean, obviously, if you have two GPUs, you want your model to be parallelized, right? I mean, you want it to be parallelly doing things in an efficient way. Again, that that orchestration that actually does this uh, does this parallelization is supported on Linux because you can kind of install NCCL, but on Windows, that's not possible. That's what I'm trying to say. So, which means you, uh, when, when you're defining your strategy, right? When you're doing your distributed uh, strategy for GPU, uh, then you have to add that, uh, you know, your cross device operations are going to be hierarchical or single GPU, that's it. So these are the cho choices. Hierarchical is based on my experience slightly better than single GPU, but it's not it's not it's not as efficient as uh, doing things in parallel. So uh, so that's why don't be too excited about dual GPUs on Windows. Now, if any of you know a workaround or uh, a better way of doing things, please let me know. But this is based on my knowledge. Okay. Now uh, again. As you can see, the process is very straightforward. It worked without any issues. In fact, when I did this uh, three, four years ago on an older GPU, I had to jump through a lot of hoops and I was preparing to spend almost a day or two in getting this ready, but everything was done within like half an hour. So I hope you don't waste your time, especially with these instructions. So look at the instructions in the description. And I know you love this video because after 14 minutes, you're still, <laughs> still around. So please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit like if you really like these videos. Okay, thank you guys.